So doing the handbrake mod for my G920, um, I've tapped it off the B button. So there the wire tracks for the B button. I've um, already hooked it up and tested it and still got signal using the, uh, the pad button there and also by connecting the open wires on the end. So I'm using, um, I believe it's a JST, like from the uh, radio control type stuff. Uh, so that way I'll have a connection down through the shaft. So if I want to take it apart again, I can. I'm not going to have to be hardwired through the center. Uh, like I see some, it just makes it easier to pull apart if I need to pull it apart. So then I'll have another connector floating around in here. So this will be uh, the male end. Um, and that'll come out. That'll be sticking up in there. Uh, and then that'll connect on. Um, and I'm going to have a 25 mil jack uh, on the front of the uh, the wheel unit itself so that way I can just plug it in so I'll sit there down around the front Okay, so here is my completed handbrake. The only thing I've got left to do is just change those white cable straps for black ones. Didn't have any black ones in the shed. But here is my completed handbrake. Um, and I've seen a few iterations of it, a few versions uh, on the net. And some YouTube things, ideas on how people have done theirs. Um, mine's a little bit different and, you know, people don't like, well, I don't like um bragging about stuff but i think this is possibly one of the neatest solutions um, and simplest ones um, it's not messy um, there was no real work required on the um hide handbrake unit um, so I'll, well i can show you what i've done now that it's finished um, you've seen in the early parts of the video how i opened up the steering unit uh, logitech g920 and I tapped off the circuit board for the B button. Uh, so that comes around to here. All right, so that's the hand where the handbrake plugs into. So that there is basically, in effect, uh, my B button external now. Um, so runs down to the front. Uh, so if I show you this, so that's Dirt 4 playing in the background. Uh, hit the A button, goes forward. B button on the wheel. I'll do it again. B button on the wheel goes backwards, go forward, uh, pull the handbrake, and I'm going to spin it, pull the handbrake, and away we go, B button. So a couple of videos I'd seen where they tapped into the uh, left and right buttons, which are the paddle shifters. Uh, doing that, you then lose the ability to use the paddle shifters during the game if that's your handbrake button. For me, it was B button or no button. Um, so, okay, so this is it, basically, uh, this is a, a Track Racer RS8 uh, unit, and it's got the, um, the shift off to the side, as you can see, apologies for the crappy video, but anyway, you get the gist. Um, so that's my, that's the shifter mount there, and it's just got a pretty hefty mount. Um, I had a mate make up a, a mild steel plate for me. I made it out of aluminium first, cut it out myself, um, but I was just a little bit too flimsy. So he's used my aluminium one as a pattern and he's made it out of mild steel. So look at that, there's no wires or anything. So standard hide handbrake unit, picked up on eBay for $24 Australian, I think it was. I've kept the unit on the back. Um, one, or for two reasons. One, I didn't have to worry about making a plate on the back with a spring unit and a bolt to give the correct movement and uh, resistance so two um it gives great you know you've got the great resistance and feedback because still got the piston in there keeping the bungs in there so it keeps keeps it a closed loop and perfect look at that so underneath nice and simple there's my little radio control jst plug so if i want to strip the whole thing down i can disconnect it uh, the micro there 
the bracket for the micro is welded to the, the frame. That way it just gives a nice rigid structure. If the micro craps out, take the cylinder off and I can just unscrew the micro and solder a new one on. No biggie at all. So it's just a, a cheap, well, I think it's a $3 micro from my electronics store. Single pole, single pole, single throw. And all I've done is with the long lever arm on the top, bent it over to give me a bit of springiness in it. Um, just pop that forward. Let's just, I might have to bend that down a little bit more. Oh crap. Anyway, um, so I just put a washer on the back of that and that's my contact plate. And as it goes down, look at that. Simple. That's it. And it springs back forward. Alright, look, it's so simple. And look how neat it is. Look how neat it is. That's that's the big thing for me, being um, a stickler for details. Um, I'm sure might, some people might say, yeah, but you've got the cylinder hanging off the side, off the end. You know what? When you sit in it, you've got plenty of room here for your hand. And look at that. It's right there in arm's reach. I want to turn this up a little bit. No, that's not going to work. Um, yeah, look at that. So right there to there, right there to there, nice and close. Done. Happy as Larry. So I had a crack at it with the other night, uh, put it all in place and set it all up um, prior to paint, just for final test. And yeah, I could not be happy with it. So all up, you know, thirty or I say twenty five dollars for the handbrake unit. I think I spent about. Uh, Geez, no more than another ten, eleven dollars for a micro switch. The wire I had, three bucks for the um, the jacks and the J or the JST leads would probably have been the most expensive bit. You know, that's another ten bucks there. But I had those in my um, box of bits for my radio control airplanes. That is it. That is my handbrake for my Logitech G920.